hitting a plateau, losing weight, and hitting a plateau on the deadlift. That's what this video is about. This is Mark Bell from Super Training TV, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, answering more questions today for the Power Project. If you have a question for the Power Project, please email me at powerprojectarmy at yahoo.com. This message is brought to you by the Slingshot, How Much You Bench.net, and the only strength magazine in the world, thepowermagazine.com. This question today comes from Roy Trump, and um, he says that he's kind of stuck. His body weight's actually going up. He's following kind of a low carbohydrate, uh, high protein, high fat uh, diet. Uh, but he's also said that he hasn't really tried carbonite. And what ha what has to happen here um, when you're trying to lose weight is you have to realize that you yourself may have to work twice as hard, three times as hard, four times as hard, five times as hard to get the same result that the, the asshole next to you gets by dieting for two days. So you might have to pour a lot into it. You might have to put a lot of time and effort into it. And it might be very, very difficult for you. Um, so when you hear one person say, yeah, I lost 10 pounds in a you know, week and a half. And, you know, when you hear people say things like that, that's good for them, but that's them. And that's not you. Uh, for some reason, uh, we are all different in those, in that regard. And so you are going to have to put forth a stronger effort, a, a, uh, much, uh, a much, um, you're going to have to look for what's optimal, not just what's uh, pretty good, because pretty good ain't going to cut it. Um, you can think about like school or think about playing uh, sports in high school. You know, when I, when I went to school, it was really hard for me. If I didn't study, if I didn't pay attention to every single thing that uh, was going on in class, even when I did, I still didn't get good grades. Meanwhile, the kid next to me didn't have to pay attention at all, and he smashed everything. Or you can think about, you know, when you uh, when you played sports in high school, how the guy next to you, maybe he didn't even need to work out. And you worked out every single day and you didn't even come close to making a team. You know, so things aren't always fair. Going into any diet or any training program where you're trying to make yourself better, going into anything in life where you're trying to make yourself better, trying to make yourself stronger, trying to make yourself smarter, always realize that, that going into it, it may be a much bigger battle than you anticipated. But rather than back down and cower away in the corner, keep fighting, my man. Keep going. Keep going for it. So what you need to do is you need to uh, actually just follow Carb Night. Uh, I would just suggest that you go buy the book from DangerouslyHardcore.com. Um, if you don't want to buy the book, here it is for free. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> man. Got a little bit of a cold here. Anyway. Uh, what the hell was I saying? Okay, the carb night is a seven-day-a-week ketogenic diet, eating a one-to-one -one ratio of fat to protein approximately. You'll probably get in about 50 more grams of protein per day than you will with fat. Supplement your fats with coconut oil, fish oil. Um, you don't want it just to all be saturated fat. You want to try to have somewhat of a healthy approach to it. But uh, bacon, eggs... Um, chicken, steak, uh, pork, fish, um, all those kinds of things are, are fair game on a ketogenic diet. You can eat, you can uh, have at it. Now, I would, I would say you can eat as much as you want, but you can't. Uh, there'll be a certain point in any diet uh, that you're following. At a certain point, you will have to start to reduce the amount of food that you actually eat. Uh, for many people, they don't have to do that for a while. They don't have to worry about it for about two, three months. Um, so let's not even really worry about that too much for now. Those are the foods that you're going to eat. If you want to eat some vegetables, then go ahead. I, I hate them, so I don't really eat them. But if you want to eat some vegetables, try to stick with greener options, um, you know, such as uh, broccoli and, and, and uh, spinach and that kind of stuff. Um, but the, veg the vegetables can help uh, kind of fill you up, for one. They're kind of like almost empty calories, not a lot of calories in vegetables. There's also fiber, um, minerals, vitamins, things like that. So they can be very useful in a way. A lot of times when I go out to eat, uh, rather than, you know, getting a bunch of junk or, or um, you know, just to try to avoid, you know, eating, uh, 
eating something really awesome as an appetizer. I'll order a salad the second I sit down to avoid to try to eat eating to avoid uh, getting involved in eating all the bread and everything else that's sitting at the table. Um, so that might be some things you want to try. And then also with my entree, I'll always get some sort of vegetables. I won't eat that many of them, but I'll eat some of them, and that'll help fill me up. Um, another thing you need to know about diet, never let yourself get too hungry. Unless you're a bodybuilder, you're getting out of bodybuilding stage, you don't need to suffer too much. Uh, don't let yourself get hungry. When you get hungry, you make bad decisions, and almost it's almost worse than being drunk. So uh, that's something also to think about. But the, key, but the carb night diet is a seven-day-a-week ketogenic diet. And on that seventh day, the last two meals, you get to eat uh, some carbohydrates. I would stick to cleaner carbohydrates. I would suggest that you eat about, uh, let's go with about three to 400 grams of carbohydrates, somewhere in that range. And then you get right back to the diet the next week. Always remember when you're on any diet as well that, you're one meal away from being out of the diet and you're one meal away from being right back in. Just because you screw up doesn't mean you have to screw up the whole rest of the day. Just because you make a mistake and you get fired up and you eat uh, some peanut butter chip pancakes in the morning uh, doesn't mean the rest of your day has to suck. That is a terrible way to start out your day and it's a terrible way to um, to kind of kick your body off for the day. And it, and it will kind of send your body, it will send my body into a frenzy. I want to eat donuts and everything else. Um, so that's not recommended. You know, try to stick to the plan the best you can. But if you get out of it, realize that you're one meal away from re being right back into it. Um, all right. So and it also, uh, you said that you're stuck. Why not try to add in some cardio? Three days a week, 30 minutes a pop. Get your heart rate between 120 and 130. Your heart rate might already be 120, 130 just from sitting there. Um, but just get it to about 120, 130. Uh, somewhere in that range, 20, 30 minutes, three times a week should be plenty. Let's do 30 minutes, three times a week. That should be uh, a good enough spark to get you to burn some fat. Now, as for your other question, you mentioned that your buddy, your buddy is stuck on the deadlift. And I've done a lot of videos on deadlifts. People ask me all the time, which I think is kind of funny because my best deadlift is 766. There are other monsters out there that deadlift much, much more than myself. Uh, but anyway... As the people's coach, it's my obligation to answer these questions. Um, so he said you're, he's stuck on a deadlift, and he's tried many different styles of deadlifts. He's tried block pulls. He's tried to pull against bands, and he's tried a bunch of other things. Um, one thing could be possible is that he might be deadlifting too often. So... Um, Two, you know, two weeks of some form of a, you know, heavyish pull, followed by the third week of a speed pull, and maybe the fourth week he does some type of good morning, or maybe every three weeks instead of the speed pull, maybe he just does a good morning. So he has a different stimulus, he has a different exercise uh, that that he's doing. Also, uh, you didn't really mention where you thought he was weak. So without that information, it's a little bit difficult to answer. Uh, but something like low box squats may help him. If he's a conventional lifter, um, close stance, low box squats may help him. If he's, if he's, uh, if, well, a, for any style of deadlift, a front squat can be beneficial. Works your core like crazy. Works your lower back, your stomach. Just works everything. Works your quads. Um, let's see what else can he do. So good mornings would be a, a good option if he's not already utilizing those. Um, and then also just be really careful with deadlifting too heavy too often. You can deadlift heavy for a while, but you can't do it for too long. Um, I know, you know, someone like Eric Lillibridge, I think he's brilliant. He deadlifts heavy every two weeks. Uh, that's, that's a pretty smart approach. I know power lifters of the past, they used to do, um, they used to do bench squat and deadlift, uh, every, like, uh, at once a week or once every 10 days or once every 14 days. And they would do light, medium, heavy, and they'd rotate it around. Um, it sounds it sounds crazy, but that's what that's what some guys were doing back in the day, and they were getting great results. So you got to make sure that you recover from some of these heavy deadlift workouts. I don't normally say that, but when it comes to deadlifting, the deadlift will leave you dead. So you got to be very careful. That's why they're called death lifts. You got to be very careful with the deadlift. You got to be very cautious. You got to be smart in your approach. So let's just make it simple on you. Let's just have you Cuban, okay? Invented by Mark Cuban. The Cube method, invented by Brandon Lilly. You can buy his book from jtsstrength.com. 
I have no business relationship with uh, Brandon Lilly, but I do have a very personal one. Hi, Brandon. I love your beard, big boy. Anyway, uh, Brandon Lilly's cube method is just you're going to utilize the repetition effort method on a deadlift one day. You're going to utilize a speed, the speed method on another day for deadlift. And on another day for the deadlift, you're going to utilize the max effort method. So you're applying three different methods over the course of three weeks so that you're going to be fresh going into some of these workouts. The different stimulus that you're going to experience is going to allow you to recover from these workouts much more easier -ist. So look that up. You know, if you can't find it or whatever, look up Brandon Lilly on Facebook, and you can, you can uh, shoot him a message, and uh, he'll be able to assist you. But also make sure you're doing your assistance work. Make sure you're doing your homework. Make sure you're doing things like stiff leg deadlifts, uh, glued ham raises, sled pulling, things of that nature. Make sure you're working your stomach. Make sure you're uh, handling some weights whenever you're working your belly. And that is it from supertraining.tv.